Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. My name is Bahamut. We have our final best of three of the evening. It's going to be the members of Clouded Minds on the left-hand side, excuse me, and Piecemeal on the right. This is going to be a best of three series from Division C West. And I'm sure you're all sitting at home wondering how we got to Alterac Pass, and don't you worry, I got you covered, friends. The home team this evening is going to be Clouded Minds. They're going to be winning the coin flipped, opting for map pick priority. The opposing side of Piecemeal is going to ban out Battlefield of Eternity and Braxis Holdout. Towers of Doom and Cursed Hollow are banned out by the members of Clouded Minds, and Alterac Pass will be our map number one, chosen by the members of Clouded Minds. Let's go ahead and check out our draft as it already has progressed a little bit here. We are going to be seeing a Garrosh being banned on the left-hand side and a Stukov on the right. As I said, this is Division C, so we are swapping a little bit of our... Uh, Draft mentality, I think, is the best way to put that when we are getting from from heroic to from into division C. So it's going to be a little bit more on the comfort pick side. Some more maybe heroes that that we might see some target bans. As I was um, fishing through things earlier, and I saw that there was some strongly Ming players, there was some strong Kalthos players. So definitely going to be getting a lot of great back and forth between both these teams but i'm super excited about this and i hope you all are as well thank you for joining me for another wonderful evening of heroes of the storm action so i'm just making sure that everything is moving f smoothly in the background just checking one other thing okay that 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 okay cool we're all set with that wonderful okay sorry just want to make sure that everything's running the way it should be running it's just always get nervous about whenever I stream it's just like something I will forget about something or something will go wrong in the background but either way Jaina gonna be the first pick on the right hand side with a Joanna Anduin on the left I like this Joanna Anduin overall chastise is a really good lockdown initially you have a good wave of uh, that that divine star for a wave of healing to come into the friendly team and the flash shield holy word salvation is, is a useful tool but light bomb with falling sword is definitely a possibility here as we already have the Joanna being picked up right hand side we have the Jaina Pairing into that, you could see a Rainer, maybe even something like a ETC, just to be able to get the Ring of Frost with that. But they're actually going to swap into a Phoenix instead, so they're going to be looking for the slow damage from Jaina to pair into the Phoenix. And and I actually, I like the Phoenix a lot. I, I, I don't see them enough. It's mostly that Rainer because you have the Ace and the whole value at level 1. Hyperion is a really strong sieging tool, but it looks like they want to team fight more on the side of piecemeal rather than looking for siege potential. Excuse me, one. So Rhaegar will be banned out on the left-hand side, not allowing them to have any sort of Ancestor healing with the Mosh, but, but, that means we are going to be having things like uh, the uh, Divine Shield, uh, Divine Mosh up and available, and that's definitely a strong and scary thing to, to, to consider here, because you could be getting blown up by that, and, well, that's just going to run you down, and then you can... Well, you can't interrupt the Divine Shield Mosh. Like, how are you going to? You have to wait till it's over. So, either way, the ban on the right-hand side may be targeting something uh, from the opposing side, but no, they're going to get rid of po the poke potential from Junkrat, as he is quite a nuisance. But something like a Hanzo is still up and available. I think that would actually be a great pickup for them. And then with the Hanzo, they could be looking... So that could be, like, some of their poke damage. Then they could look for something to dive in as well. Something to lock down the Thrall and the Jaina. Maybe even, like, a, 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 a Thrall would be really, really good just to step up and lock down a couple members with the... Uh, with the spirit or spirit wolf? I think I'm blanking. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I, I let these teams know. I just, I'd like, there's a there's a band talent from Alganus, so I just want to make sure that at least I told them and I did, I did my due diligence just so that we're all on the same page. I don't want, uh, like, a game one to go to a DC. That's just not fun for anybody. But anyway, sorry. Um, the Orphea at Malganus, I think, can work out really, really well. I liked the Hanzo. I thought the Thrall would be a good setup for them. But it looks like the opposing side will be picking up the Thrall for themselves. And they're going to also have a Lucio to speed up some of these engagements as well as to break it down to buy a little bit of time as well as kind of buff out the team fight for the friendly team. Now, Malganus is probably going to be your solo lane into the Thrall. Orphea is your main source of damage. They're going to need something else. I still love the idea of a Hanzo here. Hanzo or um, Maev, like uh, something like that. Range poker or kind of a dive poke would be really good for them, but they're going to go into the Rainer. They're going to have Hyperion value from that. Okay. I would expect Orphea. I don't think we get an Eternal Feast because there isn't really a ton to lock them down with. 
Uh, what's the band talent and why? Uh, the band talent is winged guard, and I believe it just doesn't stop proccing is the issue. How you doing, Petter? Well, there's our draft for game one. I'm not 100% sold on the Rainer, but I think it can still be valuable. I just like the Hanzo a little bit better for the range poke, but the siege potential from Rainer can be really, really strong. Phoenix Jaina is a really great combo as well. You have Earthquake from the Thrall that pairs into that that I wasn't even thinking about during the draft. So I like that a lot. That also off offers opportunities for ETC to start stepping up and set up, setting up Masha's. So when I'm looking at the drafts with names aside and everything, I'm kind of thinking that this is going to lean a little bit more so in favor for the members of Piecemeal. But we'll have to see what happens here as we get into game number one. On the left-hand side, we got Venus, or I guess Venus is going to be on the Rainer. We have Swing going to be on the Orphea. Tiger going to be on the Malgana. Star Knight will be on the Anduin. And we have Zednam on the Joanna. Can we just talk about this Mount Synergy? All, all green clouds? All clouded mines? Chef kiss. On the right-hand side, we get the members of Piecemeal. We are going to be having MJ Doom on the Thrall. Dark Knight is going to be on that ETC. We have Silver Jackal on the Phoenix. Odd Thought will be on the Jaina and Zloth on the Lucio. What is the bug? It does not stop procking. I, how I do that? I do not want to sit here and tell people how to use bugs to get advantages in games. So if you want to seek it out, here is not the place for it. But either way, we have the Malganus splitting off into top lane. We're going to be having the Rainer into bottom, making sure they're soaking up right there immediately. Doesn't seem like they really care about the initial team fight in mid lane. Just going to be looking for setting up, setting up experience. That's all it is. It's just like, we just want to play into the experience and it's not really that big of a deal to kind of mash our faces into each other in mid lane. There is a bit of an advantage because you, it is the it's the initial wave that does crash on the map, so you, you want to clear that quick enough. But if everyone kind of just goes in their respective lanes, you can also pick up a little bit more of that experience earlier. Venus is uh, seeing that there's a couple there's someone in that bush over there, so now they're going to be dove upon this bottom lane. And I don't know if you make it out of this one because the penetrating round was already used, and the dive will be good. And Rainer goes down, first blood going over to the members of piecemeal thrall being uh the dominant force in this top lane, working on that crash lightning. Excuse me, the echo of the elements at level one. Anduin did go into the... Oh my god, I'm blanking on the name. Bold strategy, yes. Siege camps will be grabbed on both sides. I actually, I always harp on this, and I really, really like this timing coming out from both teams. And I'll go through the, the quick reasoning for it is just because of the fact that it's a 1 minute 30 cooldown on the camp itself. If you're able to grab that before the 1 minute 30 in the game, you can have it up and available before the next objective, or excuse me, the first objective, because that does proc at 3 minutes into the game officially. It does get announced at 2 minute 30. So having this initially in the wave, or in the lane, allows you to have the same kind of situation like Battlefield of Eternity or Infernal Shrines, where you're able to just constantly push in the siege camps or excuse me the shaman camps and split the enemy team focus so i'm just looking around minimap and trying to see if anyone's going to be playing aggressive no we can stick in mid lane see how these players are going to be in going into each other for now is this just going to be a little bit of a push back and forth but yeah they're the neither team is going to be trying to step up into each other they're just kind of waiting for the waves actually Nizednam is going to be trying to step up here and they want to continue to hold this lane over in their favor swing going to be throwing out a little bit of damage as well let's uh, go ahead and pop into the bottom lane see how odd thought and weenus are, are are sharing this lane as odd thought is i think just waiting for the wave to crash into them and then they're just going to clear it out and just kind of repeat rinse and repeat that right there doom is going to be handling top lane as they are working through their echo of the elements at level one almost done with that already they actually only need two more stacks and they're slowly whittling down the waves so they can get those and they actually only need, only need one more Weenus once again in bottom lane and a bit of a rough spot but they have the penetrating round to force the enemy member back in so they won't be losing out anything right there does tap well Looks like they might be they might be interested in trying to take an engagement here. Swing is actually okay. No, they're just going to be over on the camp on the left hand side. Star Knight's going to be coming over to help out. Tiger does get out of here. I was seeing I was seeing a couple uh, icons on top of the on top of them, and I was like, did they are they collapsing onto Tiger? But their health pool looked fine at the top bar, so I was like, okay, no, it's it's the Night Rush that's buying them a little bit of time, as this is going to be Zloth. Backing off, going to go help the Phoenix, make sure that they grab that camp from mid lane, and this is exactly what I was talking about. 
you're creating mid lane you're creating mid lane pressure to force the enemy team to respond to something that allows you to then have a little bit more priority onto the objective. Malganus will be in top lane, so it doesn't seem like they're too interested in playing into the objective phase. Might want to try and push up this mid lane a little bit further with their object or with, excuse me with the camp that they just got. Try and uh, soft push this lane so that when when they potentially get the first objective, they're able to then capitalize on top of that. So yeah, they they push that into the front wall, and now they're going to back off and look for this objective. But the enemy team realizes this as well, so they're going to be having those camps crashing into each other, and now Power Slide from the ETC going to be sitting up on a Star Knight. They need to back out of here as they're taking quite a bit of damage. Great route from the Thrall will solidify a kill, but that will be the ETC going down, traded out. Sloth going to try and wall ride right out of there. Now Malganus has got enough damage, but the penetrating round from Rainer solidifies the kill. A two for one in favor for Clouded Minds as they even up the experience, and we also have seven talent tiers rolling for both these teams. MJ Doom is getting a lot of good damage into Weenus as the burst almost comes through from Odd Thought. And I think I think Silver Jacket was considering coming down here to try and help out, and they can see that Weenus' health is very low, and there's just one plasma cutter to the face. Rainer just lopped in half. And it will be objective channeled in favor for the members of Clouded Mind. Swing trying to find a way out of there is going to be getting picked off as well. Odd Thought going for the Connor channel to stop this out. So it will be held up for at 12 seconds. They do get a little bit of channel in their favor right there. Tiger very low. One Ice Lance will connect, but I don't know if they have the chase. Oh, Lustio has the Boostio. They do find the kill right there. And while that is going to be cleared in mid, the enemy team will say, cool, let's go ahead and grab ourselves an objective and let's try and get the channel in our favor. Now, the death timers are not that long, so this will allow you to be able to potentially bring this back or fight back over the star. I was looking at the null camp being grabbed and I was trying to do mental math. I was like, can you grab the null camp and still re-engage into this point? Because it's only 30 seconds and this it's not like they're, they're, they're clearing this exceptionally fast. So it's going to be around 12 seconds, but now they don't have a lot of time to work with. And if they're interrupted, when they're channeling, it does contest the time. That's why that bar goes yellow. But if they themselves are poked, it's going to be interrupted. Doesn't seem like anyone's able to poke this in time, so they stop at 7.6 seconds. The Phoenix gets picked off right there. Great, great last hit coming in from Swing with the Shadow Waltz. I believe is the name of the talent. My, yeah, no, Shadow Waltz, I believe it is. Anyways, uh, this is going to be channeled once again in favor for the members of Clouded Minds and Tiger finding a sleep onto two. I do going to heal off, off of them as well with a Necrotic Embrace, but that is just going to be objective grabbed and um, they're going to be pushing on in through lane. Tilted Sister, how's it going, friend? Thanks for coming by. Great plays. I was actually referencing your Li Ming last, from last night uh, when I was talking about a Li Ming earlier today, and I was just like, maybe they're looking just to lock him down and get that Seeker value, because dear lord, Tilted Sister, that 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 play on on Volskaya Foundry, where you just cleared up mid lane while they were just like walking up into it, it's like, oh yeah, we can siege into a Li Ming. Apparently not. And god, that was just, that was so much fun to watch, and thank you so much for the games. It was, it was a blast to cast all those. I hope you all had fun with them. Objective is going to be coming in in favor for the members of Clouded Minds. We do have the members of Piecemeal on the back foot, or excuse me, on the defensive posture for this. Now, I wouldn't say on the back foot. They're not, they're not hemorrhaging, they're not losing a ton right here. They're just slowly losing a little bit when it comes to their structures. This is going to be mid lane losing out the front gate. Top lane is going to lose the front gate as well, and I think bottom lane might be a fort. So, overall, from the members of Clouded Minds, a pretty good objective phase in their favor. Bottom lane is going to be a boss lane where they can feed in uh, some extra damage and siege potentially through that bottom lane keep. My Ming is just pray is praying spray. Then you're you're heckin' lucky because dear lord was that awesome to watch. MJ Doom in mid lane. Looks like they're gonna be able to rotate out of here as Zednam and friends were looking to try and yeah, they were looking to collapse on this gar uh this garage, um, onto this thrall. Blessed Shield actually was just thrown out as well. Appreciate you doing that for Tats and Big Scary Duck and letting us be a part. Absolutely, I want to do more stuff, stuff like that in the future. If, there's a, there's I, I, there's a lot of like here's the Storm Community events and it's just like there's there's aspects in different parts of the communities and different communities themselves that we never get to cast or talk about. So um, I have another I have other ideas in mind. So I'm just super excited that 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 went so very well and I'm glad that it was just it's 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 been a positive response from just about anyone I've talked to. Everyone was like we liked the format. It was really fun. We had a good time with it and the casting was enjoyable. So that's that's all I care about. But they care about kills here in our game and that's going to be the members of Piecemeal finding a kill onto Weenus. That will be Silver Jack or Blue. Linking out Tiger a little too far from the friendly team does get picked off as well. And now two for zero in favor for the members of Piecemeal. They're going to be looking for a... Dear Lord, excuse me. They're going to be looking for a boss for themselves here. Was a win-win for everyone involved? The question I have is, is did Totsky end up getting free Taco Bell from Big Scary Duck?
That's the one question. I'll obviously bother her on her stream tomorrow. But I'm just... <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm curious if, if she if she pushed him into it because I was joking about it It's just like that's just for bragging rights, but I was just like well She could potentially get the that free Taco Bell anyways boss for top lane gonna be coming on in for the members of piecemeal We haven't cycled through some of the other numbers yet So let's get an idea of what those have looked like so far when it comes to damage experience and healing We can also get an idea of what the total kill count looks like as well as who's been getting the assists as well as who's been getting the main kills themselves but second prison camp will be opening up here now if you remember the first one is going to be 30 seconds on alterac pass it goes up by 10 seconds to a maximum of 50 so the first one will be 30 second one will be 40 and the third one will be 50 seconds capping it right there i always say this in every stream but i'd, I'd be curious to like if if it went up to like a maximum of like 60 or 70 seconds like what that would change and how the engagements would be looking in the later half because you you basically like you have to channel it for a full death timer i mean 50 seconds is 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 like two death timers at this point but still anyway it's just it's one of those things that's just always curious like how big of a difference did, did does that make and did the development team actually have the opportunity to, to try and test that i would assume so because like there's a lot of like tomb of spider queen i i bet that that was the initial mechanic it was like well every time tomb every time you turn in the web weavers you you have to you add five more gems and i was wondering if they were going to continue to do that on a map like this where like you know at one point you have like a hundred seconds or something like that that'd just be absolutely wild it's just it's it's a cool it's a cool concept that i've always just been interested about while the bottom lane boss is going to be grabbed this is going to be the objective currently worked on by the members of piecemeal and uh with the boss grab for bottom lane top lane boss is not up front of the three minutes three minutes and 20 seconds they actually can grab the siege camp and still make it over there in time they have 30 seconds and we know that they can do this with at least two members in like 10 seconds so it would the entire team they could have done it faster but still i think they're going to prioritize this objective phase a little bit more let that boss push through and maybe even stop the enemy team from hearthing back now hyperion's going to come out here a little early they're kind of announcing their arrival with that one right there but either way they're going to get some value with the earthquake coming out from thrall i think they're looking for a salvo on top of this break it down's going to buy some time as the objective will be stalled out at 12 seconds rainer getting the channel right there stopping it and this is going to be tiger diving into the back lane trying to find some value for the friendly team but they're getting way too low they end up going down before any sort of carry and swarm value can come in for them but the objective stopped they are this is going well for them with the objective stop but now it's starting to turn south as they lose their rainer on top of this zednum it doesn't have an iron skin to keep themselves alive they end up going down as well this is going to be orphea poking in i think they get one interrupt but this is definitely a bottom lane keep going down in favor for the members of clouded minds is big scary duck a fortnite mobile streamer no i don't i don't think so sam account i don't think so i don't i don't think uh big scary streams at all Hopefully our team learned to ban Deathwing after three games of it. Oh, uh, you banned him in the first game. Also, Murda, welcome everyone from Murda Stream. I hope you had a good one, my friend. Thank you everyone for coming on over. Thank you once again, Murda, for the raid. Yes, go Venus. <laughs> I honestly like. I said this at the start, but since you just raided over and you brought all of your friends, can we talk about this the the mount synergy right now on the side of Clouded Minds? All green clouds. I, it's just it's just absolutely beautiful, but this is objective coming in. They're trying to look for a flank into the enemy team. Malganus is finding it, but they're very far from the friendly team as well as Zedna. Blessed Shield's gonna slow them down as well. Objective is gonna be pushing in through lane. Odd thought gonna be dropping the um, Ring of Frost behind them as the Holy Word Salvation comes out from the Anduin, gonna be interrupted by Dark Knight as well. Venus is trying to make their way out. Great leap of faith, and they weren't sure which way to go. Salvo comes out as well. That's going to be the crushing jaws with a Hyperion on top of it. Malganus still trying to find a fight within all of this as the objective is going to be pushing in through top lane. Another Divine Star coming out from the Anduin, but they lose their Malganus. They clear out the top lane, not losing too much out here, just the gate as well as the majority of the health on this. I'd say there's a third of it left. They can zone the enemy team back, but I think... I think they're going to say, you know what, that's forfeit. We can at least clear mid and bottom and solidify and, and keep our forts there without losing too much, so... They give over top lane for it. The enemy team is probably going to set up for a boss. I wonder if they actually had vision of this. I don't think they did. I think they actually took everything down beforehand, so they just see that thralls in mid lane. Boss is up in 38 seconds. This is a bit of a wait for a team to sit around, so I don't think, yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing that right there. But 16 talent here will be running the corner for the members of Clouded Minds. They already got that on the side of piecemeal. I'm trying to find someone without a quest and talent. There we go. Murda, how you doing? Gravent Gaming, how you doing? Thanks for coming by, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. And Murda, thank you once again for the raid. Welcome, everyone. And thanks for supporting the stream and helping us push towards that partner. We do have our uh, 
no camp coming in through mid lane. I was going to call it Reaver camp, and I'm like, that's that's not right right there. Is the Thrall is looking to... Are they? They're just sitting around objective. I'm like, it's not up yet. Like, I think maybe they're just trying to... They're Maybe they're thinking about a flank? Earthquake is up. They could, like, flank Salvo, but even then, Break It Down has got to be something they're considering. Excuse me, not Break It Down. Holy Word Salvation. I looked at the Lucio. I, I was looking at Holy Word Salvation, but for some reason, just my mind went to Lucio. We do have this area being cleared out mid lane, and I think it's just it's kind of the the lull in the in the, in the fight bet before we get to our next objective. Um, once again, let's get over to the blue vision. See if they notice that the enemy team is going to be trying to jump up onto this objective or onto this boss. Same thing with them. Oh, oh, oh! This is good. This is really good. Zednam will check the bush. I think they did see them. They, yeah, they do see them that they're bo they're backing out of here. We get the dismount. ETC has a nice power slide through. Jaina can dr drop some damage down as well. She did go for the increased range on the uh, Blizzard with the Stormfront at level 13. Not a not a talent we see too often, but if you do feel like the enemy team is going to uh, dive onto you and, and blow you up, that's just a good way to consistently have damage being put out. But MJ Doom in a bit of a rough spot. Going to pop the Earthquake Salvo coming out. This is a Blessed Shield to interrupt the Salvo right there. Mosh Pit coming out as well. Ring of Frost underneath that. Leap of Faith pulls them into the Mosh Pit with a Divine, excuse me, a Holy Word Salvation on top of all of it. So a lot of Damage mitigation happening with the Hyperion getting full value the entire time. Chastise coming out. Salvo comes out once again. They don't find a kill, but Phoenix ends up going down. So it's going to be two kills in favor for the members of Clouded Minds. The objective phase is up and available in the bottom lane, and they could look to capitalize on that. But it seems like they're going to back off and go for this boss. I'm just trying to consistently show Vision just just to get an idea of how they're playing, and just so you all can get an idea of like what what decisions they're making. You know. Whether, you know, do they try and push mid lane and get some value? Do they try and rush to uh, objective? No, they they don't see the enemy team, so they're going to play it safe. They're going to grab something they know they can rotate away from. They've also got that speed boost from Lucio playing on the far side of this objective. Look at the positioning from Athot's really, really good here. Because if the enemy do team does come in, it's going to be definitely through this top position. So they're, they're going to be expecting them through there. Lucio has the speed for that, as well as he has the sound wave to push them back. Now, Athot is coming out here into, into top lane, and this is a little risky because, they, as I said, they still haven't seen the enemy team. They know that boss was picked up by them, so they're somewhere potentially around. But once they show, they, they can feel a little more comfortable. And that's why you're seeing Odd Thought play so far back like this. This is a very, very good tool in your own game. If you feel uncomfortable and the enemy team's diving on you and you are the spellcast, you are the burst, this is a good way just to kind of make sure that you're not getting picked off consistently in the fights and you're able to st sustain and have that damage available for the friendly team or even just the poke during objective phases. But speaking of objective phases, we are here on the third one of the game. And this is going to be the members of Clouded Minds trying to channel this right here. And doing dropping the beat, yeah, exactly. Because he has like, because in my mind it was like the exact same thing. Like he was dropping the beat, but it was just holy word. I don't know. My brain doing funky things. Apparently, eight o'clock is an, is a, is a late time for me to start casting. But we are going to be having 18s up on both sides. Hyperion coming out to zone them away. This is a very very good tool for the members of Clouded Minds just to keep the enemy team back from potentially stepping up. And this continues to have the channel in their favor as they have 15 seconds and rolling down to get this objective. Earthquake coming out from the thrall. This is going to be Ring of Frost as well. Leap of Faith won't be able to save Malganus. Until as the Holy Word Salvation will be used. There's going to be Salvo going out. Great interrupt from, I believe, ETC to knock them out of the Holy Word Salvation. They, oh, they're trying to stall this out. Zednum with a huge condemn. As long as they can get one person to not channel, that'd be huge for them. And it slowly, slowly is getting there. Zero seconds go through. They lose two, but they get the objective in their favor. I don't know if it's 100% worth right there, but... Because I think you could have definitely cycled out and waited a little... Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure about that, honestly. Maybe Lucio's spitting the holy word. <laughs> Just bug. Oh god. By the way, these Reaver minions, they, they do a lot of damage. And they have, well, they can tank a lot of damage as well. Seeing the core falling and then taking quite a bit right there. This is going to be the the enemy team pushing in through mid lane as they don't have their their full team and their full force with them. They're just going to take down a fort. I think they're going to back off and maybe regroup with Malganus. The Joanna's not up for the next seven seconds, so I think they're going to try and push up their top lane with Malganus. I don't know. This is you can see them. You can see the indecisiveness on the map. They're just not sure where they want to go with this because this is a bit of a wash. While they did grab it, they're not able to really get much value with it as this top lane or this bottom lane does push in. Top lane going to be managed by the thrall and I think they're just going to set themselves up for a boss play after this. Boss and bottom lane, if I'm not mistaken, is off cooldown after this objective. Top lane has probably got another minute 30 on that one. But 20 talent here is here, and uh, Lucio, are they going to go for the upgrade on Holy Word Salvation? They're going to they're gonna spit some more Holy Word? No, I'm just kidding. 
They could go into the base Nova, as I call it. I believe it's actually pronounced completely different, but uh, you can you can pop those like two or three times in a team fight, at least a sustained team fight, because it, it, dear lord, does they get value. Um, is it death metal as well for the ETC? So no tour bus from them. Thrall holding, but I'm wondering if it, yeah, it's earth and shields from them as well. This makes sense because you're going to get more sustainability and survivability from the friendly team, as well as it's just a better team fight for you overall but power slide from the etc they don't have 20 talents here great great leap of faith to save them out of that mosh pit as there was an interrupt onto as well from the blessed shield hyperion comes out boston top lane is as i said up in the next 20 minute 27 seconds we do have the uh null pack null pack excuse me is going to be up and available so they're going to grab that from mid lane melgan is going to manage this as well and just hold this out. I, overall i think this is really really good play coming out from the members of clouded minds and they're just pushing the members of uh, piecemeal kind of onto the back foot consistently here throughout this game number one in our first in our excuse me in our final best of three of the evening. The oh, this this invade on the camp though, Star Knight and friends see it, so they get they get that's a that was a really really good invade for them. They have double they have double null pack for mid lane, and they're actually going to crash on in together. So while that's being managed, the prison locations will open up, but it's only 18 seconds away. So I think the camps will be cleared out, and this is going to be a full 20 versus 20 fight. Majority of the heroics are off cooldown. Oh, I'm ready for this one, chat. I hope you are as well. This is this is about to be a really, really good fight. Kelser, how's it going, friend? Thanks for coming by. All right, Dark Knight's gonna step up. This is gonna be channel from Star Knight right there. Ring of Frost goes out, but it doesn't connect onto anyone. I don't know, we don't have Cold Snap at level 20, so don't have to worry about that. Holy Word Salvation is going to be used. That's going to buy some time. Oh, but the Salvo actually, okay, I think it mitigated the Salvo, but Death Mash is gonna be getting driven. That's gonna be Tiger jumping into the Carrion Swarm form. That's gonna be a huge crushing jaws from the Orphea. That will be the Phoenix able to get out of there, but the Night Rush comes through. They get the blow up onto the Phoenix as well. This is Jaina getting very low. This Rainer is clearing house and i was saying in the draft i was like oh i kind of wish it was a hanzo instead and i'm gonna shut my mouth because rainer just cleared cleaned up swing is making sure that the objective is going to be channeled because these jailers can get the counter channel now they don't contest the time much like how a hero does that's why when you see them channel it's not going to turn yellow in the bar it's just going to be it's going to still progress they just have a channel time with the five members down the opposing excuse me four members down the opposing side they're going to make quick work of top lane make sure that they get themselves a keep here and then realistically i would say you make a hard rotation to mid you meet up with your objective and you push in with that and you try and take a third keep and then solidify this game because i don't think without their without the objective i don't think they can look to end i know i know there's the four dead on the opposing side but the death timers are really low and that's the one thing i'm most concerned about is is maximizing your value here so if you're able to get through you, if you get two keeps and you don't get the core at least that core has zero shielding now because currently it's got 20 spell and physical armor you're going to see that that last 20 is going to fall away when that last little shield goes out as well so it's just something to note if you didn't know that if you're wondering what those three shields were that is just that is from those keeps that are on the map but a huge ring of frost comes out leap of faith will be saving one crushing draws coming out as well purification salvo connecting onto quite a few as there's death mosh connecting onto the rainer who's just dancing that's going to be holy word salvation out from the end as well rainer ends up getting picked off by the phoenix so they're at least trading out right there plasma cutter finding another kill but unfortunately the damage is a little too much from the objectives crashing the yeti goes down and that's going to be game number one going over to the members of clouded minds gg well played An awesome game number one. An awesome game number one right there. Murda, once again, thank you for the raid. Really appreciate that, friend. Thank you for bringing all your friends over here. I hope you had a wonderful stream. I hope your casts were the best. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it, bud. Okay. How is everyone doing tonight? This has been a... It, honestly, it's been a blast of games thus far. It's been an absolute blast of games thus far. Thank you all for hanging out. Thank you all for supporting this evening. It's... I look forward to this every single day. Like, I seriously look like this is the highlight of my day. So, um, thank you all for being here. Thanks for thanks for just cheering on teams. And it just... It, it, it means the world to me. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, first pick. Or map pick. All right, let's show talents really quickly. Also, I think the heat kicked up in the house. 
So let me make sure that it's not going to start getting super hot in here. Because the studio already gets insanely warm. I don't know. We're, we're good. Oh, wait. No, no. It kicked up to 68. No, go down to 66. Okay. All right. We have that. Let's go ahead and bring it on back to Bandit and I. Oh, you could see like one little ear goes up. He was just like, hey, what? He's pooped today. We had, we had a long walk today. Uh, where's my map? There it is. Let's also get the team score updated. Beastmeal game two. I mean, you gotta lose to get to start the reverse sweep. It's the truth. <laughs> uh, I wanted to check something while we get players in the lobby. Uh, ba -ba 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 uh. Oh, there's no score. Okay. How did we get here? Oh, Keladorn. Oh, Keladorn. I will tell you in a minute and a half when we get our teams in here. <laughs> How you doing, bud? Thanks for coming by. Good to see all your faces in chat tonight. Um, while we're kind of hanging out, while we're kind of getting ready for this, I can update you on what the schedule is going to be looking like for tomorrow. I say this and then I realized immediately, I don't know my schedule off the top of my head. Luckily, there's a nice little caster dashboard thing, so my casts. Tomorrow night, for anyone, so if you're enjoying the games tonight, you're like, man, I can't wait, I can't wait for more games to be casted. Well, you're in luck. Tomorrow night, we're going to be starting out at 5 o'clock PST with Division D East, Probus, Probius versus Team Elite, or Team Elite, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And then we're going to be seeing... Uh, at 6.30 PST, that's going to be Division B East, and it's going to be Giggly's Wiggly's versus Regen Phoenix. That's going to be a great best of three as well. So we have two best of threes tomorrow night. We got two more best of threes on Wednesday night and two more best of threes on Thursday night. So we got a lot of great action for all of you this evening and further on throughout the week. We're just getting players into lobby and then we'll go ahead and get into game number two of our final best of three of the evening i just want to say once again thank you all for hanging out thanks for helping us push towards our partner goal we have we are consistently just working our ways towards that higher average viewership and then once we get there that's all we need that's all we need tournament draft i forgot to set that up um it's gonna be team one with map pick priority or uh first pick priority Alrighty. give him a twitch link oops that <laughs> I sent the same uh, map uh, I sent the same band thing to uh, the players by accident hat on dark please okay all right cool we're all set with this uh yeah no I meant to send them a twitch link and I sent them the 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 band the talent band <laughs> Okay, so we have ready from one team, and we'll get it from the other, and then we'll go ahead and get into game number two. You're doing well, Kelladorn? Okay, good. <laughs> Kelladorn asking the real questions? Exactly, Ektar. Exactly. All right, we just got to get clouded minds. Okay, going. Good luck. Have fun. Spooky worm. All righty, let's go ahead and get into game number two. I'm sure you're all itching to find out where we're going to, and I will let you know what that is in... No. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Dragonshire, our second map in our second best of three series. My name is Bahamut. I'm going to be your host, your analyst, your admin. You're just about everything except for a player as we have the members of uh, Clouded Minds up one in our best of three series between the members of Piecemeal and themselves. We're going to Dragonshire and I'm sure you're itching to find out how we got here. Don't you worry, don't you fret. I got you covered, my friends. We are gonna be seeing the members of Clouded Minds winning the coin flip for game number one. Towers of Doom and Cursed Hollow were banned up by them. Battlefield of Eternity and Braxis Holdout were banned up by the members of Piecemeal. And uh, Clouded Minds opted for map pick priority, so that will be Alterac Pass chosen by them. They won that map 
Piecemeal being the losers had the opportunity for first pick priority or map pick priority, and they are going to be going for map pick priority, choosing to take us to Dragon Shire. Let's get back into our draft and take a peek and see what we are getting here for our bans, as well as what we're going to be getting for our first few picks. Now, Garrosh going to be banned out here. Not wanting to deal with that once again. I'm trying to remember what the bands were off the top of my head. I feel like this was a Junkrat ban from Clouded Minds in the last game. A lot of poke damage can be removed here as well, but it's actually going to be a Kael'thas. Maybe maybe the Junkrat was a little bit later, um, but Kael'thas was, I believe, the, the ban in the last game, and so getting rid of that makes a lot of sense to me. Li Ming was the ban on the opposing side. That's what it was. The members of Piecemeal got rid of that Li Ming. They didn't want to give that over to, I think it's Venus, or Venus, if we want to pronounce that correctly. As I just realized, it's 8.30 and I'm drinking black tea, so sleeping's gonna be itchy. You're itching? You're itching, Kelidorn? You should get some lotion. Good to see uh, Cloud of Mines back in Division C. Were they ever out of Division C? I've always known them as a Division D team, as I almost dropped my mug. So I believe we have same bands from game number one coming in for game number two on Dragonshire. Now, first pick, gonna be the Jaina, actually, for the members of Clouded Minds. I believe that was actually the first pick on the opposing side in the last game. Rexar Anduin coming on through. Did I swap these teams something like that? Rexar and, okay, so Rexar Anduin. Rexar for the solo lane. It's a little early in my opinion, because now they can say, well, actually, no, I expect this to be a Rexar in the solo lane. I don't think they're I don't think they're gonna run like a main tank Rexar in the bottom with the rest of the friendly team. Rainer will be grabbed as well, so that's gonna be the duo of Jaina Rainer. So you have that that sustained damage coming out from both of them. And then Joanna with more slows. This is a match made in heaven in a sense. I mean, this is looking like Grey Main and Li Ming. Like that's a great duo because Grey Main can capitalize or even set up Li Ming for resets, and it's all about setting up Li Ming. Here you're just setting up the Jaina slash the Rainer. And Joanna and Jaina can both do that, as well as Rainer. I mean, Joanna and Jaina just set up Rainer so so very much. There's so many good slow uh, utility, or so many, so much slow utility between those two heroes that Rainer uh, Ace in the Hall at level one gets so much value. Banwise is going to be a, excuse me, an Ana. I was actually expecting something like an Alex Draza or a, um, not a Decker Kane. I'm trying to, Ariel, excuse me. I could not think of it. I was like, whoo. There's, there's, there's heroes that I'm seeing lately that have really good zone potential, and Ariel's actually one of those heroes. And with a Rainer Jane, I think that would actually work out really well for the members of Clouded Minds. But either way, we'll see what they grab. As Alex Strauss is great for point control based maps as well. We do see that this will be a ban coming through. Uh, they need a main tank or some damage. They're actually going to get rid of Arthas, so they're uh, worried about. Hmm. Why are they banning out the Arthas? Are they thinking Illidan here? Because usually ban out Arthas because you don't want to deal with the Frozen Tempest, which is going to uh, slow down your, your auto attack speed. Now, I wonder if it's just also for the Rainer at the same time. Arthas does push face really, really hard and into a Rainer that, that auto attack speed reduction is pretty powerful. So I think that might be the direction, but we'll, we'll hold out. I feel like there's an Illidan on their way. A Greyman and a Diablo will be grabbed here, so they're going to be going a little divey. But I like the Diablo with the Anduin. Even though Diablo dives out of Anduin's range, Anduin can step up with a Chastise, which does follow up on Diablo's range pretty well. So if you get the Shadow Charge into a wall, overpower onto the opposing side, Chastise coming in from Anduin, you have Greymane constantly dealing damage during all of this. He Dark Flights in with the with the Diablo and, and shredding through with the Razor Swipe. So I, I like this pickup actually on the side of Piecemeal here. There's a Rhaegar to round out their draft with Akira as well. So I think we're seeing a solo lane Kira with a Rhaegar, Joanna, Rain, Jaina rotating between mid and bottom to get those stacks for Jaina as quickly as possible for her regeneration globes. On our last pick, though, coming out from the members of Clouded, excuse me, um, of Piecemeal, they have this Greymane, a Li Ming, oh, excuse me, Li Ming was banned out. I was like, Li Ming here would be great because it's just, it dives well with them, but I'm trying to think. They need some extra damage. Hanzo wouldn't be a bad idea. You could go Maev or Genji if you want to dive, but I like a Hanzo a little bit more. Okay. So just more range, okay, because mostly what I wanted was range damage, and the poison over time might be... Actually, Rhaegar deals with po with damage over time very, very well, so I don't think he, they're going to be struggling with that one. We'll see, but Lunara does offer a lot of good vision into the enemy team as well. Over, I, I got it, like, overall, just looking at all of this, I, I think we're in for a really, really fun game, because I think this is going to be a great back and forth between both sides. I don't think this is going to be... I don't I don't think we're seeing, like, a shutout. Like, I don't think Diablo Greymane just run it down. I, I definitely think Rainer Jane Joanna's going to be making some plays happen right here. But I hope you all are liking it. I hope you are all liking these games. Um, 
I thought go double support. <laughs> uh, what would you say? Incoming Kira, how'd you know? It's almost like you're cheating. <laughs> Rhaegar, good for camps and additional snow for Rainer. Exactly, exactly. Alrighty, everybody, let's go ahead and get on in to game number two. On the left-hand side, we got the members of Clouded Minds up one in our best of three series. Tiger going to be on the Kira. Zed and I'm going to be on the Joanna. We have Venus on the Rainer. Star Knight will be on the Rhaegar. And Swing will be on the Jaina. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Piecemeal. We've got MJ Doom on the Rexar. We've got Zloth on the Anduin. Silver Jackal going to be on the Greymane. Dark Knight on the Diablo. And Odd Thought on the Lunara. Let's go ahead and get into our mid lane and check out what our level ones are. Sentinel Wisp for the Lunara. I can finally say that talent. And, I, and I'm and i not accidentally calling Sentinel from um, Tyrande the, the wrong thing. But actually, we're going we're gonna to look at the... Excuse me, the Red Vision for a little bit here. Just trying to find some of that as quest intel. I just want to show. I just want to show the vision that they were actually getting from the Sentinel Wisp because it's always something I like to highlight. Just it's it's such a strong tool, and when it, when the change came through, like it wasn't it wasn't like as prioritized as as it is now. But as chat was saying, slow value coming in from that totem, allowing Rainer to really put in the pepper on Dark Knight, and that's going to be taking them down to about half health. Meanwhile, in top lane, Tiger going to be throwing a lot of damage onto the, onto the Misha Bear, and they're just trying to get that blood stack going up because they are on the Fatal Wounds at level one, going to be stacking that up to I believe two. 100 stacks. I think it was actually changed from 150 ish. I think it was like 150 to, and then it got moved to 200. So just a little bit longer on that one. But even then, it's it's really not that hard of a talent to finish out. And if you are able to get the angles onto the Misha and the Rexar, you're able to get the double stacks in the solo lane matchup. But Tiger will have to play, I was going to say, Tiger will have to play this real safe as they actually just grapple hook straight into the Misha. And this is, their health pool is very low. Misha charges in, and first blood going out in favor for the members of Piecemeal. We have Greyman on the right hand side grabbing the camp for bottom lane same thing going to be happening with the Jaina and the Rhaegar going to be able to force that through bottom and have some extra and it's not, some some additional siege coming in through that lane this is a bit of an experience advantage for the members of our red team as they did get that early kill. So a little bit of experience went over in their favor as well when it came to the soak, but Zedna will be in top lane making sure they're not missing out on too much and Kira now back going to make sure they jump onto the point. But bottom lane is going to be a great back and forth as they don't have a main tank Swing and, and Weenus are doing their best to just poke at this. But once they decide to actually step up onto them, I feel like, okay, no, Rhaegar's coming in. And they don't know this, so I think Dark Knight's going to be having the Shadow Charge in. That's going to be the slowing Totem end as well. Rhaegar, do you have a butt bite? Not even needed. A Star Knight and friends actually capitalize on the Diablo Vision. That's a really, really big impact. Like, just being able to kind of slide in there and just have that slowing Totem, allowing Rainer to have extra damage into the Diablo if the Jane had missed out on any sort of that slow from her Frostbite baseline ability. So it's just, it's just more... More value coming in, and that Rhaegar just making a strong choice for the friendly team. Silver Jacko going to be diving in. We do have the Misha Bear on that top point, 1v1ing into the Kira. I think the Rexar is dealing with the top lane as well. Weenus comes in here into this mid lane. Star Knight should be able to get the channel in time. Lunara does have the Wisp on the point, but I don't think anyone's going to be here in time. Oh, they are still they are still stalling this out. Mm, Lunara gets the point in bottom lane, though. Also, so I, I always like to highlight this, but look at this currently. This right now, this is the vision all from Sentinel Wisp. This gigantic, so if it sits in a bush for five seconds, it gets 200% range. And this this helps you so much. Like, you know how the enemy team's going to be playing. Obviously, if you're mini wave scouting out a little bit as well, but it's just... E having that much information is a big thing for a team and I always like to harp on that because I think vision is one thing that is, is overlooked and not considered too often really good overpower on Darwinus pulling them back in here they're all kind of fighting in this tight corridor but Zloth is taking way too much damage they end up going down here Weenus getting very low doesn't have the sustained damage from Lunara on them so they're actually going to turn around and say Dark Knight I'm going to try and pepper you down as they do find a channel potential for a Dragonite but no one will be in lane actually Greyman going to be going down to the Kira as well as the Misha in bottom lane Weenus does go down to the poison damage from the Lunara. No one in mid lane for the channel just yet. Rhaegar is breaking off, but I don't think they're going to... Actually, Joanna's going to stay on the point, so that will be Rhaegar clearing out the wave. Zednum should be able to stall this out. First Dragonite going over in favor for Clouded Minds. This is the Joanna's trying to get out of here, but the Diablo body is too thick. Almost getting picked off right there from the body blocking. But meanwhile, mid lane, we do have a Dragonite pushing on in. They're going to be opening this up slowly but surely, and I like how they're playing this currently, though. 
Tiger's gonna be in the top lane still, making sure that the Misha and the Rexar aren't gonna be leaving that lane. We have Greyman Anduin dealing with mid, and then we have the Joanna and the Rhaegar in bottom just trying to split the attention of the enemy team. This allows the Dragonite to get so much more value because with, you know, obviously, I mean, if Lunara is sitting here with Nature's Calling at level four, chunking down the Dragonite, that's obviously going to be a very quick Dragonite phase. You're not gonna get much value here, but if you split their attention much like you have, you're gonna open up mid lane front gate. They didn't take out the well, but just they, they open that up so they're, uh, they can be more aggressive in lane. But here you can see the Dragonite health pool is getting shredded as Greymane dives out with that Dark Flight. Kick goes out onto Silver Jackal. They actually kind of saved them right there. Silver Jackal had a lot of damage thrown onto them. Jaina does come out of that Dragonite form. Gonna be throwing one more Blizzard down. The Healing Totem comes out from the Rhaegar, and I think they're able just to disengage completely here. Throw a little bit more damage out as uh, Swing is still working their way through that baseline quest and sitting at 12 out of the 20 stacks on the level 1 Fingers of Frost as we transition to top lane. Kira's going to be going down right there, so a little too aggressive in this top lane, but 187 stacks on the uh, Fatal Wounds at level 1 for them and at 5 minutes in the game. So working pretty quickly through those stacks while the rest of the teams are going to be grabbing some objectives, excuse me, some camps to push across the map. And Joanna once again in top lane to manage the lane, keeping them from, from losing out too much here in top. Burden of Execution falls on piecemeal. Kira should beat Rexar if even skill matchup. It's a 4-minute DK. It's pretty weak at this point. I agree. It's pretty weak, but they still they still got a decent amount of siege. I just I wanted to highlight how they were splitting the enemy team of focus because I feel like a lot of times I see teams they'll grab they'll grab a Dragonite and then all five push with the Dragonite. And I'm like, but if you still split the enemy team's attention, that Dragonite, albeit at four minutes in the game, is not that strong, still sieges in a lot better than just just your Rhaegar, you know? So it's it's one of those things that, like, I wanted to highlight at least the, the really smart decision that, that Cloud of Mines played right there is just still staying in their respective lanes, picking up good experience, and keeping themselves in tow for 10 talent here. But that's going to be both teams actually hitting 10 just about the same time. So we can actually cycle through some of the other numbers, get an idea of what those look like. Here in top lane, still pushing up pretty aggressively. Might be able to get the kill onto the Rex or... Mm, yeah, they're gonna be able to get the they they're able to get the healing just in time onto the Misha Bear, but Tiger's saying, well, maybe can I stab you some more? Can I put more of those uh, Carnage? I believe it's Carnage stacks onto them. But in bottom lane, bit of a brawl that could potentially break out between these two teams. It's four v four currently. Everyone kind of waiting to step up. That's gonna be Joanna just clearing out the scent or the Wisp as it came through. The objective phase is up and available. Kira getting forced back through top lane. Once again, jumping into bottom. Seems like it's going to be a bit of a, it's this posturing, looking for someone to be a little too far out before they can really try and dive onto any of them. Ooh, Divine Star coming out as well. And they're just gonna back off. What do you think of the new exp experience stuff? Uh, I've been playing here and there as much as I can, and I enjoy it. Uh, I was getting pushed in on a brawl map, and I didn't feel like I couldn't get my experience in lane. Uh, that is just everything being thrown out. Apocalypse and Ring of Frost will be traded out right there. They're also going to trade out the Rexar in top lane. Kira going to be holding that one over up there. We do see that the Lunar is down, but Jaina was picked off as well, so that's a lot of the burst damage, but they still sustain damage through Weenus, who does get hit with the Ancestor healing. Great timing from Star Knight, and also targeting as well, because Weenus was the one that was overpowered. I think they were trying to delay that to maybe even bait out the abilities from the Diablo, but here's the thing. While that was happening Kier was able to, to grab oh I don't think they're gonna be able to get here in time Silver Jackal, they end up getting the Dragonite just in time. So we are gonna be seeing about a seven minute Dragonite here. So second one for the members of Clouded Minds as Weenus is gonna be just trying to throw that pepper onto Dark Knight who is gonna be full souls on the Diablo. Now this is going to be everyone grouping up and pushing in. I kind of expected them to maybe split their assets on this one again, but it doesn't seem like that's gonna be the case. They really wanna confirm the bottom lane fort, maybe even look for some potential damage or even a kill onto one player. Huge leap of faith onto Dark Knight to save them from the far side of that fort. Kick goes out onto Diablo to force them further back, and now Kira and friends are gonna back off. But here's this is a great example. They are gonna get a fort, and the Dragonite has already lost the majority of its health, and that's gonna be from that Lunara just poking from range. Oh, that's a great setup for a Blessed Shield. This is going to be the... Oh no, the Greyman gets kicked before it actually gets saved. Before he gets killed! 
I think they were banking on the kick from the Dragonite to get the kill on, onto Greyman. I have done this one too many times, and that's like, I've done it like two or three times, and I'm like, all right, we're done. Like, we're done trying to like get the field goal kill. Because it is funny, like, it's like, ha ha ha, their body just ragdolls across the map, but that's gonna be Tiger in a bit of a rough spot. Cleanse goes out into them. They're trying just to get out of here. They're trying to throw as much damage and get Carnage healing, but it doesn't come through for them. As the Hyperion comes out, Light Bomb's gonna be continuing to go out from the Greyman, and they capitalize on a Jaina kill as well. Hyperion comes through. I don't think it confirms the fort, but still, it's a great turnaround in favor. Actually, got one more of those big shots out. It's a great turnaround for the members of Piecemeal as they find themselves in the driver's seat in the experience department. Not by much, but still, talent to your advantage and a little experience on top of the enemy team. Probably looking somewhere in the third to half area when it comes to, um, to an, an experience advantage. Or maybe quarter to half is probably a better way to put it. I had a transition from ab from S tier to F tier in one swift move. Yeah, I think um, I said it in a stream last week. Sorry, I'm not really keeping up on chat too well tonight. It's it's just been a lot of things happening in this game, so I want to make sure I'm, I'm capital or making sure I'm discussing all of it. But uh, the one thing that I was pointing out and I was talking about is like I wish Abathur still like they made they made an exception for Abathur. Like he's the one here that can. And Lost Vikings. Abathur and Lost Vikings are the only two heroes that can that can soak from a bush. Like if you made Abathur and Lost Vikings still able to do that, I think they'd be st they'd be super super valuable because, well, you don't really put Abathur in lane. Like you you'll you'll even during like those objective phases when when you have uh, Sky Temple for example, where you always know that bottom lane is not going to have a temple in the first objective phase. Typically, Abathurs go out to that mid position, but they're in the bush in that mid position, so that way they're not really showing. It's just one of those things that, like, no Abathur really plays in the lane. Rarely do you see Abathurs play in the lane. If you ever do, it's mostly because they're trying to bait someone to come into that lane to, to, to gank them, but usually the Abathur knows this, they're watching minimap, and they have great um, they, they, just, they have great eyes for this, and they're making sure that they're not going to be getting picked off. I myself do this. Like, I will see an objective phase, and I'll play in front of the minion wave so that the enemy team can see me, but I'm not sitting there soaking in the minion wave. I'm just mostly pushing my body up a little bit, so I'm just into view, and it's just, you can't always do that, and that's where Abathur's gonna struggle the most, but anyways... Overall, I, I personally think so far the experience changes, they're not awful. I'm enjoying how they're working so far, but Weenus is getting all of the damage thrown onto them. The Apocalypse goes out, like, they, they got hit with the Insister healing. They end up getting the Anduin and Greymane. Lunar just dumping in the damage into the enemy into the enemy team, and they don't get a kill from them. The Hyperion comes through, getting sustained damage during all of that. Diablo did lose souls, but they are going to be back up immediately, and this will be top lane still held over in favor for the members of Piecemeal. Rex are going to be going back up there to manage that one. I would actually say this, since they have the bottom lane controlled and they just took that fight, I would actually quick rotate to bottom and expect them to be going to top lane. That way they don't get the channel on the Dragonite, but now Kira in a bit of an odd spot. I wonder, do they have a grapple? Yep, there's the grapple to keep them out. Um, for a while before the hotfix couldn't even soak a wave in, fr in front of- yeah. Tiger taking a lot of damage, but that, that damage was worth it. Well, you can grab a 12-minute Dragonite into the game. Final Strike coming through, but doesn't get the uh, the kill they're looking for. They have 16 talent here, but as I said before, this is a very, very close series, and it's just going to be the experience just a sliver behind from the enemy side, so they're going to be picking this up as well. And now they're sitting in a bit of an awkward spot with this Dragonite. They've got a minute left on it. They could siege into top lane. They're, it seems like they're just unsure of what they want to do, but they need, they're on a timer, and they need to make a decision here. And it's not like the Dragonite isn't seen on the map. I mean, the enemy team sees that this Dragonite is moving into top lane. This is the vision currently for them, and so they know that they're going to be trying to take this fort. Looks like they're going to try and step up and make the defense happen. They do have a great camp coming in behind them. That giant circle is going to be giving them spell armor. I believe it gives them 20 spell armor uh, when they are inside that circle. We can double check that in a second. Yeah, it's going to be 20. Alright, so the Hyperion comes through. Dragonite still kicking and pushing in. This is a lot of damage. Oh, that's a great Blessed Shield as well. That's going to be the final strike coming through. Finds the kill onto the Misha Bear. And now Silver Jackal split from the friendly team. They're going to rotate into mid and potentially open this up with the Dragonite here. They don't have a wave coming in either. But the Dragonite can anchor a lot of this damage. Uh, the Jaina is the one who's in the Dragonite, so it's a lot of siege coming out from them, but actually it doesn't seem like that's going to be too big of a deal as Kira is able to siege in with the friendly team pretty effectively. Overpower onto Kira. They're trying to get the burst onto her. I don't think she has a... I don't think... She, oh my god, the Insister healing is going to be perfect onto them. I think it was a Light Bomb as well that came out onto Diablo. Yeah, it's on a... It's a, it's a 60 second cooldown, right? Yeah. And they disengage. Woo! Venus had like 5 HP, I know, right? 
Venus taking one for the team, face checking hard. Yeah, someone's gotta. What's up, Zuru Rose? How you doing, bud? Hello, everyone in chat. I'm sorry that I'm missing so much in chat. I know you're asking me about experience stuff, and I just gave a rant, and I didn't respond to anything what, what people said. But overall, my my, my view on the experience, uh, I'm enjoying it. I, I I haven't like I'm I'm not like I don't feel like I'm very frustrated by it. But I haven't played many competitive games with it yet. I played some brawls. I played some AI games just to test some stuff out. But I haven't gone into like quick match storm league or uh, unranked yet. So I'll have to figure that out over the weekend. But if fight's breaking out, is that's gonna be a lot of leaping strikes. They don't get the ancestor healing in time because there's none to be used. But that's a great ring of frost connecting on the two. Leap of faith is going to save Dark Knight for now. But that's Diablo going down with no souls. Well, only 70 souls, so no buyback. Light bomb comes out. They're trying to zone them back with that one right there. And the hammer, or no? Jaina finds the damage. I thought it was the um, blessed hammer from the Joanna that got that last little bit of damage onto them, but hey, either way, they find themselves three kills, only losing their Rainer. They don't have that Hyperion to siege in here, but they still have enough damage between the Jaina, Kira, and, uh, excuse me, Jaina, Kira, Joanna, and the Rhaegar. So this is easily a fort in their favor, excuse me, keep in their favor. Fort in top lane is being besieged by this camp, and I don't think they're too worried about this right now as they get themselves a keep. They'll back off. They can have Hi uh, Rainer deal with top lane or Kira as well. But they can grab the camp in bottom lane as well as the objective as it pops up. So far, Cloud of Mind's in the driver's seat here. But I'm not going to count them out. I'm, I'm not counting out the members of Peacemill just yet. Their fights have been strong. They've had some great plays in their favor. And we can see. Maybe the 20, 20 talent tier uh, spike is what they need to take us to a game three. Or Cloud of Mind's can close it out here in game number two. Jane a nice snipe. Yeah, Brand Flakes, like, I agree. Like, I was just like, oh, yeah, that was a blessed hammer. No, Jane is out here trying to buff up her KDA a little bit. We're going to cycle through some of the numbers once again. We've seen talents for quite some time. We'll look at the 20s as they do come through. But now Rainer dealing with top lane. They do lose the fort, as noted before. Camp and bottom lane is going to be pushed up. They do clear out the mage, so at least there's no uh, spell armor. But now this is potential first Dragonite for our red team. But Rainer's making sure that's not going to be happening. Weenus in that top lane does get the counter channel onto it. Mid is going to be cleared out as they don't... They find themselves about a level down on the opposing side. So with 20 talent here on the side of Clouded Mines, they're going to have to play this really safe. And, and by really safe, I think they're just going to have to rotate in... They're going to have to counter rotate the enemy team. So they're going to need to expect where the enemy team will be. Let's actually jump over the red vision really quickly. So once they see someone like a blue player rotating towards bottom, they're going to make a quick rotation to top. Like, this is exactly what you need to do in this situation. You cannot fight into this team. Well, I mean, you you can. You can definitely fight this enemy team. That catapult range? Hello? That's an odd one. Rhaegar grabs bottom lane. The team's sitting in mid. I don't know. Do they have vision? There, oh, Sentinel Wisp is going to scout him out. Tiger knows that they're seen because there's that red dot over their head. Yeah. Sentinel Wisp value right there. So they know that they, they're they they're setting up for a gank through mid. Another, there you have to wait a couple seconds, then it just buffs out that vision. They know they're not on their bruiser camp. They're going to continue to just rotate towards bottom lane, getting some soak along the way. Here's the bush party over on the left-hand side. It's over in this bush setup. Cold snap for the Ring of Frost, actually, for, for swing. That's going to be the center explosion for the root. Star Knight is super MVP this butt. <laughs> butt spot kicking in just perfect. There's going to be the Ring of Frost connecting onto a couple. Great main trying to avoid this. That's going to be the Cold Snap popping as well. And they find two kills with that most value I've ever seen with a Cold Snap. And that's going to be Dark Knight taking way too much damage. They go down as well. Souls were reset. So you can see that one second death timer onto them. But they're continuing to push through bottom as Grey Main, Diablo, and Rhaegar are going to be here for... Excuse me, Rexar are going to be here for the defense. But they're looking to end the game right now on the side of Clouded Mind. 17 minutes in with 21. 20 talent here advantage for a couple seconds. The enemy team will be grabbing that as well. Their damage under core is pretty good, but they're not focusing said core is the issue. As Star Knight is taking a lot of damage, does pop the self-ancestry healing onto themselves. That's going to be the Storm Shield out as well. Final Strike comes out from the Kira. Revolving Sweep finds the Diablo kill. They have full death timer right there, staggering out of death. And now the core is being sieged upon by the members of Cloud of Mines. They just wanted to get that Diablo kill. They are feeling like the Lord of Terror needed to go down. Silver Jackal is going to get picked off. Ring of Frost going out as well. And there's going to be another Cold Snap going out for you, but I can't believe that cold snap value right there game number two goes over to clouded minds in a 2-0 fashion gg well played all right everyone let's get ourselves an interview here
What a great series, everybody. But we're not done just yet. We got to get ourselves an interview, and then we got to talk about tomorrow's stream schedule. <clears throat> Show talents once again. Oh, all right, well. At this time, I'm going to be joined by Tiger. How are you doing? Congratulations on your 2-0 victory. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I apparently have to ask you immediately. Um, if you can read this, ask Kira about the aggro top lane. <laughs> ask Kira about the aggro top lane? That's, that's, that's the oh, entire man. message. <laughs> well, there's a pog slide before it. I don't know if that changes anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm known to go aggro a time or two, so yeah, I, I die a lot because of it, but sometimes it pays off. Sometimes <laughs> you gotta you gotta spend money to make money. In this case, you gotta feed to, to win, right? That's that's the mentality we're going with. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, but this was such a fun series. Let's let's back up. Let's go to Alterac Pass. There was a lot of great back and forth on that map, and it seemed like you were in the driver's seat consistently. Were there any moments where you felt like you needed to play around the enemy team in any way, shape, or form? Or was it just like, all right, we we're driving this, this is our game, we're just gonna continue to, to hold this out and just body the enemy team yeah well i don't i don't know i'll have to go back and watch it i don't necessarily think we bodied the, i think that they got more kills than we did but we were able to kind of i think we kind of out macroed them there because we got all the bosses and kind of played that game um and we won a couple key team fights and and then that kind of enabled us to to roll it so yeah uh, you guys did an amazing job with that first game. Now, going into game number two, a bit of a different draft. They they had this Rexar very early. Were you worried about your solo lane matchup since we are, you know, since I'm chatting with you? Were you worried about your solo lane matchup into a Rexar as a cure? Or were you just like, oh, this is easy stacks, no big deal, like, I got this? Well, I've played solo lane against Rexar with Kira before, mm -hmm. and I've done pretty well. Uh, this particular Rexar was very good and, and was able to kill me a couple times. But I think it's a pretty even matchup. It's not, I mean, Rexar is scary in the solo, no matter who you have. <laughs> but I, I think Kira give, gives you the best opportunity to kind of kind of get to him. And like you said, ET stacks for that level one talent. <sighs> Easy stacks, indeed. It was it was a really fun back and forth, and I, I, I had such a blast with these games. Before I let you run out of here, any uh, shots that you'd like to give the floor is all yours. Yeah, I mean, shout out to you. Thank you for uh, casting us. You are always a lot of fun. Love your smile, love your beard, all that. Thank um, you. Shout out, you know, just to, to all of NGS for uh, putting on a, a great tournament great great league we're excited that this is uh we're in a new division and we're pumped that uh we got a couple wins right off the bat and shout out to odd thought and his team and they played really well um i know they will see them again soon but uh yeah thanks to uh thanks to everybody well it was an absolute blast of a cast it was an absolute fun best of three matchup well you guys take it in a 2-0 fashion, and I can't wait to see you further down the Nexus Gaming Series Season number 8. This this was a really, really fun one, but I hope you have a wonderful